Hello everyone, I'm Esperanza Walsh and this is Art from the Heart at St. Augustine's Church. And uh, today we are still doing our session remotely due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But we do have a very interesting topic for today and it's Fauvism. So what's the difference between Fauvism and Impressionism? They're both colorful. Uh, they're both beautiful, in my opinion. But you see, in Fauvism, let me get uh, an example from our previous class. So this was done in the previous uh, class I had. And if you can see in Fauvism, there's that contrast of color. So it gives value to um, the contrast of color. It focuses on the contrast in color rather than the uh, reflection of light or uh, the effect of light like the shadows. Um, that we see, of course, in Impressionism. So that is mainly the difference in Fauvism. Um, we don't really focus on those shadows. Like, okay, for example, I want you to have a closer look at this art piece. So this uh, is a bird, and that's the bird's shadow. And the shadow is not black, it's not gray, it's not blue, uh, it's not dark brown, it's not your typical shadow. Instead, it's purple. Because it focuses more on color. And the mountain, instead of a brown mountain, we have an orange one to uh, show contrast with the greenery that lies on top of it. So that's more Fauvism for you. As I told my um, students for Fauvism, in my opinion, it's something in between Impressionism and Expressionism in a way that it's not, uh, it's very colorful. It expresses your feelings in terms of colors but it's not too abstract. Okay, so let's um, get hands-on experience on this and let's do an art piece. And uh, we are going to do this one. So let's make a start. And that one is actually from this particular scenery. This is a photograph I took during our trip uh, to New Zealand last year when I went to see my best friend for her wedding. And uh, before the wedding, my husband and I took a quick tour uh, within the immediate area. And uh, we saw this beach, took a photograph. Uh, we saw two people there. Um, they were captured in the photograph, but again, uh, we ensured that their faces cannot be seen. So uh, that's... Um, to safeguard their identity, of course. And uh, yeah, because the focus here is more of the scenery because I do love this uh, scenery. So what we're going to do now is to draw a sketch of the scenery. And roughly, okay, based on the scenery, if we divide it into three, uh, this will be a third of the paper, like so. But I would still, divide my paper into three. I will just, uh, it won't, I won't do it um, scaled or something like that. So if you can see, I used my, uh, the line that I used to mark uh, the position of this horizon. I lowered it a bit to a third of the page. Okay, and the next thing I'm gonna draw for this one would be the mountain. Again, I won't be too strict with myself in the shape of this mountain, nor am I going to be strict with the colors I'm gonna use. However, I would still have to be able to show uh, that this is um, a scenery that has water, that has a mountain, and that has all this uh, vegetation on top of the mountain. So I have a rough shape of the mountain I like, now I'm going to draw this bit here for this uh, set of trees. And now I'm going to draw a marker for this uh, trees over here. So here I just do that. And as I can see in this area, the area where the trees grow is narrower and then the end. So as I go towards this bit, the area which is uh, occupied by trees or the green area becomes bigger. And also we have to be mindful of this. So here the plants spread a little bit downwards. So I'm going to let it spread a little bit downwards like so. 
And this is going to be my trees and plants. And of course, also this one. Now for the water, for the water, what I'm going to do is draw, to draw the lines here and here, which separates the water, the sand, and then the water and sand together. Again, these are just markers. So based on this, for the water, it's um, about here. <coughs> Excuse me, based on this photograph. So about the third, so I'll just mark that. And then here, yeah, it's about the quarter for this one for the bottom. So I will just mark a quarter. And then on this side, it's about the finger thick and the other one is also about the finger thick. So I will just mark that one and then two. And now I'm just gonna connect the lines, this line, straight lines. And this other line, another straight line. And as you can see here, they're not the same. <clears throat> As I mentioned earlier, it's just approximately a finger. It can be thicker, it can be a narrower, so it's not fixed. Okay, so we've done that bit. And I'm just going to um, draw lines to represent these people here. So there's one person here. Like so. Okay, so that person wears a hat and that person is fishing. So it's something like a stick figure, but when we paint it later on, it would be more solid. Okay, and then this person, the same person is holding a fishing rod of some sort. So let's draw the fishing rod like that. And then there's this other person over here. So slightly smaller because this person is further. Oh, I think I did that one wrongly. Bear with me. Yes, I think I did that one wrongly because I should have, yeah, lowered the body a little bit like so. And there we go. Okay, trousers, legs. And then of course it has to have a head, yes. And then the arms, and then another arm, and there we go. Let me just turn it around to make sure I got the shape right, the proportions right. Yeah, like so. This one has to be a little, a little more like that. Okay. And then the bird, okay? So the bird is actually in this area here where the water and the sand uh, mingles with each other. Okay, so we have this bird. Mm. Okay, something like that. And then the shadow of the bird. Let me just turn it around again. Okay, so this bird is not really, it doesn't, this bird doesn't look so exciting at this point. Let me just um, 
to the proportions a little bit better because it's not as easy to draw this when it's not really facing myself. Okay, that's much better. And now we will draw the shadow of this bird. And for the shadow, I will draw it here. Okay, so now I have all of that. And I'm just going to erase some of the guidelines. I've raised the guideline, guidelines not because they're wrong or uh, they're um, not in the correct position, but because I don't want them to be too dominant when I do um, the painting itself. And that's the same reason why I lightened up the characters here, the two characters. It's because I want them to be seen. So now I will start painting. And just like what I did in this one, I painted the mountain orange so in this one yeah i'm going to paint the mountain orange as well i'm going to use almost the same color and you know what i'm doing that because i like those colors again if you paint mountains you can actually use any color as one of my teachers uh, described this type of art when i was studying it's like uh, a child's uh, artwork. And when she said a child, she doesn't mean a teenager or someone who's 10, uh, nine years old, but a younger child who doesn't really focuses on the shadows or the lighting or anything like that, but instead expresses themselves in terms of the shapes or uh, and colors. Okay, so now I have my mountains. Now I'm going to do the beach. Oh, did I just do that? Okay, I didn't intend to do that. Sorry about that. I didn't intend to paint my beach with water. I just wanted to paint it with a little bit of... Yeah, yellow ochre. I will use yellow ochre just like the previous one. And that's because I love yellow ochre. But maybe a different style this time. I want to see the brush strokes. Okay. And I'm going to let some of the color go to this area where both the water and the beach uh, can be seen uh, interacting with each other. Water and the sand, rather. The water and the sand interacting with each other. Okay, and I'm a happy bunny. So I'm very happy with my beach. Now it's time to paint the water. For the water, maybe I'm going to stylize it a bit, like so.
That is because I still want the water to look very dynamic. So that means showing by showing the strokes, I should be able to show movement in the water. So now I have the water, I have the sand, I need to go back to the mountain and do uh, the trees. So that green area, I will start by painting that area with some uh, lighter green paint, like so. Okay, now I'm painting it with a darker green paint. I'm just allowing the colors to mix naturally. Still, I retain the contrast in the colors. And this is the exciting bit. I'm going to get some of that yellow ochre I used for the beach. And just, you know, paint some of that here in this area. And just let it spread by itself. And for me, that's very exciting <clears throat> seeing the those colors the difference in those colors and also seeing how they move uh, into each other so it's a um, very interesting and for me very exciting it makes me feel as if there's life in the colors themselves now the next thing i'm going to do is to paint the sky so the sky is going to be light blue Okay, well, so far I am very happy with this art piece. And the next thing I want to do is to paint the, the people in the art piece. And before I do that, I want to lift the, the paint on top of the, their sketches so that it's easier for me to add color. So I'm just lifting the paint. And now I'm ready. Okay, I am going to use red for the people. So let me start with this. Uh, let me start with this person over here. So that's the head. Now the body.
Okay, it's spreading a little bit because my blue paint is not yet dry, but I will just lift that later on. Now for this one, I would like to paint this one. Okay, let me just turn it around, see how we're doing. <coughs> Understand which colors to lift. And... Okay, now I'm just going to add a hat here. And the fishing rod. Okay, I need to turn that that way for the fishing rod. Yeah, and there it is. Okay, the paint is spreading again. I'm just going to lift that later on. But the concept is the colors themselves. So now I'm going to do the bird. For the bird, I should be more... Um, how do you call this? Adventurous. And I would be. So I'm going to use a different color for this one. Okay, purplish, but not so dark, more of a pinkish type, like so, so that we can see the bird. And that is the bird. Now, okay, now I am going to paint the shadow, and I'm also going to paint the shadow purple, but this time a darker. Uh, shade of purple. Okay, that is fantastic. So we have the bird, we have the bird shadow, we have the beach. Yeah, now we just have to wait for it to dry. So this is our art piece, very colorful. And if we look at the uh, previous one we've made, the one which is already dry, just get that one. It's gonna be like this. And uh, it's really more of a expression, expression of colors, uh, true colors. Uh, not as intense as uh, expressionism, but uh, slightly similar to it. So I hope you enjoyed our session today and uh, we will have more of this type of art for VESIM in the next sessions. See you again soon. Bye-bye. Mm,